Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TBR Schmidt, and this is my wife, Samantha. Hello. And today we are watching Patton. What do you know about this movie? This is a war film, and it won our war film Patreon poll. So we'd like to thank our patrons for voting for this to win our war Patreon poll. This is gotta be definitely an older film that we've seen on the channel. Yeah, so it has uh, George C. Scott, which we've seen before in at least, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still sick, so <laughs> apologies. We've seen him in Dr. Strangelove. Yes. I love that movie. Yes. Took about 10 or 15 minutes for a really get going, but once it does, I love it. So we've seen him before. I know that this is a super iconic movie mm -hmm. and role. I've never seen this movie, but I do know that there is like one sequence. I won't explain it. I haven't seen it, but I just know the imagery of it. Okay. I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. We'll talk about it later, so I don't spoil anything. I mean, maybe I do. Maybe I've seen it maybe. in some capacity. Um, there's like films that we've seen that are like iconic that we've seen in like Family Guy or like yeah, it's almost stuff always like Family Guy. <laughs> it, it it usually is Family Guy, but I don't know any reference to this film. Uh, we were just having a short conversation right before pressing record here. I was just asking like, okay, which war is this? What are we doing? So we're in World War II, and we discussed that there was actually a mention of General Patton in Band of Brothers. Yeah, and I told you General Patton. I don't know if he's a general or oh, not. Okay. So it don't come for her. Come for me. <laughs> Okay, but he, he is a person. Yes. Patton is a person. Patton is a person, and there's a mention of him in Band of Brothers. Yes. Related to Bastogne. Yes. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, so that's our general knowledge. We have watched a ton of war films on the channel, so I feel like there's a lot that I hadn't seen um, that was not really a genre that I was really interested in watching yeah. um, prior to this channel. And I'm totally wrong <laughs> in thinking that I wouldn't enjoy these films. So I'm really excited to see this. Um, definitely a longer film, but I think it's probably going to be all worth it to see exactly what this can convey, I guess. Yeah, uh, it should be very interesting. I mean, it's a like a very well-known and respected Oscar-winning movie, I believe. We are also watching Masters of the Air right now. Yes. So there's a lot of war going on on our channel. Yeah. Uh, but it's gonna be a much different perspective because I believe this will be on the ground, whereas Masters of the Air, obviously in the air. Yeah. But maybe there'll be some crossover that we didn't expect or anything. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. Me too. So if you'd like to see the full-length reaction for this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on our Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, let's get into the movie. It's pretty much just him in front of a giant American flag. Oh, okay. It's lots of medals. Thought this was gonna be in black and white. Oh no. A four-star general, if that's what that means. No bastard ever won war by dying for his country. The other poor dumb bastard died for his country. Good point. The bilious bastards who wrote that stuff about individuality don't know anything more about real battle than they do about fornicating. I love the perspective just on him. We're going to cut out their living guts, use them to grease the treads of our tanks. Damn. The Nazis are the enemy. Spill their blood. I will be proud to lead you wonderful guys into battle. What a speech. Yeah, what an opening to a movie. Obviously, this is much later, but I was thinking of uh, The Godfather from, shoot, the war miniseries. Generation Kill. Generation Kill, you know? Yeah. It's just kind of that same vibe. Yeah. We're going to keep moving. Oh, he's advancing. Probably where he took some... Uh, Inspiration, yeah. yeah. I think he meant the actual Godfather. No, I was like, <laughs> no. his nickname was Godfather, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This came out of nowhere. <laughs> you thought you turned mine all the way up? I thought I turned mine all the way uh, up. And yours all the way up? Yeah. You turned mine all the way down. <laughs> oh, oh, Francis Ford Coppola? Yeah. Is this directed by France Francis Ford Coppola? No. no. <laughs> but he wrote it. Yeah. Oh. Can't get it off. Oh, there's some tanks blown up here. 
so quiet. Let's gather what they could and get out of there. Jeez. Stuck? Damn. 61 armored vehicles, 45 tons of ammunition, 1,800 men. Damn. Why didn't they untie the dog? The lions in their dens tremble at his approach. I appreciate that, Excellency. What a uh, welcoming. When you think of World War II, or at least when I do, I never think about this area. Yeah. Up against Rommel, what we need is the best tank man we've got. Somebody tough enough to pull this outfit together. Hatton, God help us. Quite a reputation. Damn, pretty sure they ran over some chickens. Is this a I'm coming alarm? I think so. Already looks displeased. Where's the duty officer? Uh, I think he said he's quite as shady. We got a new commanding general due today. Yeah, right here. I don't know if it means anything or if we're back in time or something, but he That's has two... That's what I was thinking. Yeah, he has two stars right now in the intro four. What were you doing down there, soldier? Trying to get some sleep, sir. Get back down there, son. You're the only son of a bitch in this headquarters knows what he's trying to do. <laughs> Hey, we were all under the impression you wouldn't be here until 0900. Yes, I gathered that. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> We'd send over a 75 millimeter shell, the Krauts would return an 88. Power tanks, the men call them purple heart boxes. Damn. Machine gun bullets pierced the armor. And he said, no, sir. The bullets just come through one side and rattle around a bit. Man, it seems like they're not doing anything. Well, they said they needed him. Look, I need a good number two, man. I want to make Brad my deputy commander, okay? Now you're not spying for Eisenhower anymore. You're working for me. Just like that. What's the matter, Brad? I've been nominated by the president. It doesn't become official until it's approved by the Senate. They have their schedule and I have mine. Up to three. Man, he was ready to replace everything. Some of our boys were just plain scared. The image of a bullet coming right from my nose. Well, I can understand that, George, with such a handsome nose. They'll lose their fear of the Germans. Only hope to God they never lose their fear of me. He's coming in with, like, a mission. Very clear in what he wants to do. I mean, they need the help. They need the motivation. Please inform these officers that the mess hall is closed. From now on, you will open at 6, and no one will be admitted after 6.15. Dang, you get 15 minutes. Well, well, hell, General, sir, I'm a cook. You're a soldier. Any man with unshined shoes or soiled uniform? Is going to be skinned. Really escalated from that $20 <laughs> yeah, fine. Right, yeah. Could cut off easy with a fine. Man, holes in your socks. Like, this can stay. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe not. It's not a bordello. You're here to kill. Marching along with them. I understand you have two cases of uh, self-inflicted wounds. Get them someplace, but out of here. It doesn't belong in the same building with men who've been wounded in battle. Wow. There'll be no battle fatigue in my command. That's an order. Yes, sir. Battle fatigue is a free ride. Where's your helmet? I can't use my stethoscope when I'm wearing my helmet. Then cut two holes in your helmet so that you can. No room for negotiation. Oof. Music. Yeah, it got a little eerie. The soldiers lay naked in the sun 2,000 years ago. He knows his battles. You know what the poet said? Through the travail of ages, midst the pomp and toils of war. Where I fought in many guises, many names, but always me. You know who the poet was? Me. I feel like you need the right amount of, like, crazy <laughs> to be <laughs> very effective. <laughs> Man, they got a lot of people captured. Yeah, for yourself, I got something. 
ja auch kein amerikanischer General. Ein britischer General und amerikanische Soldaten? Damn. Das sehr optimistisch. Ja, sie können sich auch leisten, optimist zu sein. Ich nicht. He's underestimating after a single battle. Right, but not this new guy who showed up. Mm -hmm. uh, George, you know Arthur Cunningham? Sir Arthur. I've heard so much about you. <laughs> okay. You will see no more German planes. Wow, what timing. We were discussing uh, air supremacy, <laughs> Oh. Damn. Jeez. Ooh. Can't even have a meeting without getting blown up. Damn. Get back in here, George. We need a corps commander, not a casualty. Is he gonna get one? Oh, right through his legs. Damn, they got messed up. Yeah. How the devil did man just stage that? But if I could find the Nazi some bitches that are flying those things, I'd give them each a medal. Yeah, right? Just proved his point. Rommel and his tank and me and mine. We'd stop about 20 paces, we'd get out, we'd shake hands. That battle would decide the outcome of the war. Good old-fashioned duel. Our graves aren't going to disappear like everybody else's who fought here. God, how I hate the 20th century. Lots of battles and graveyards in this area. My God, what is he for a character? What is he for a man? He is one of the richest officers in the American army. Oh wow! On his knees, he can be a soldier like a dog, and his motto is always attack, never dig. That's a decent amount of information. Ich werde ihn angreifen und schlagen, bevor er dasselbe mit mir macht. Who's gonna strike first? Yeah. It was a lot of information, though. Rommel's 10th Panzer is going to hit us near El Gatar. It was interesting that he was reading uh, Rommel's book. Yeah. They're both trying to find out as much. Way too peaceful. Well, they know to get the hell out of here. Oh, okay, they're here. It's a lot of people. I wonder if they'll have the advantage because they knew that they were coming. Yeah. I mean, they didn't have that much warning, but he still had warning. And has he even like trained his troops like he wanted to yet? Yeah. Oh, they're waiting for you. Damn, they're really ready for you. Oh, just the rumble. Yeah, just shaking the ground. They don't really look ready. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> kind of walking pretty relaxed. They haven't spotted our positions yet. They'll get an education in about 10 seconds. Yeah, I was like, are they surrounding them? Like they have some people that they passed already? I think so. Commence firing. Fire at will. Dang, already. Commence firing. Fire at will. Jeez. Oh. Yeah, they don't know what to do. Oh! I thought that person was going to really get yes. run over. Oh, shit. Where's our air? Sir, I can't raise it. Tell him, tell him to hit him hard on the right flank. Oh, was that the guy who was always with him? Oh. Damn. All because the radio wasn't working. I would be so afraid of standing in front. There we go. Okay. So we did have some air support. Magnificent bastard, I read your book! <laughs> Just being prepared. Yeah. Well, that seemed like a victory. Like maybe they shouldn't be able to write books. About the other strategy. <laughs> until they're no longer <laughs> leading anyone. 
I can't see the reason such fine young men get killed. There are so many battles yet to fight. I feel like that was nice. Like they did the best that they could given the circumstances. Yeah. Glauben Sie, dass Patton Sardinien angreifen wird? Nein, Herr Generaloberst. Und warum nicht? Yeah, he's the Patton expert. Wenn Patton zu bestimmen hätte, so würde er in Syrakus auf Sizilien landen. Steiger, wir leben im 20. Jahrhundert. Aber Sie müssen berücksichtigen, Herr Generaloberst. Ja. Yeah. Es stellte sich später heraus, dass sie mit einem der Männer verlobt war, der ihr lediglich beim Aufsteigen helfen. Oh. Jump the gun. What does that have to do with Sicily? Pettens Geheimnis ist die Vergangenheit. Er wird den Angriff auf Sizilien deshalb befürworten, weil die alten Griechen es damals auch so... This guy's like spot on. Yeah. It's cool to see both like sides figuring out how to attack each other. Mm -hmm. I'm my favorite general and I don't like to be told if some second stringer is up against me, then I lose face. Oh, wow. He doesn't want to go up against the B team. He needs to like completely change his strategy. If you defeat Rommel's plan, you've defeated Rommel. Isn't that true, sir? Yes, I like you. <laughs> I want you to have a drink with me tonight. <laughs> the Marechal Alexander is son chef d'état major peut-être tête. What the heck just happened? Where's our subtitles? <laughs> These two got to stop being so uh, predictable for each other, apparently. You'd have made a great marshal for Napoleon if you lived in the 18th century. Oh, but I did, Sir Harold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he fully believes he did. <laughs> like that they're just all laughing. <laughs> he's like, uh, he's like yeah. yeah, I was there. I kind of wish they didn't approve his plan because I feel like he's going to be going to a trap. Maybe after this, though, he's going to realize I got to change things up. Or he'll like... No, I'm still going to hit Sicily, but I know that they know I'm going to hit Sicily, so I'm going to hit it differently. You know, Georgie Patton has already discussed his plan with Alexander. I realize that his plan may lead to an absolute disaster. Could. I will advance north to Messina with the Americans protecting my flank. Messina is the key. So you get there first and get the glory, and you just want Patton to cover your behind? George, I have bad news for you about your Sicily plan, I'm afraid. Ike has turned it down. Oh. Where does Montgomery land? Well, he'll land in Syracuse and drive north to Catania, possibly even Messina. We get the burden again while good old Monty gets the glory. Huh? Yeah. This is what happens when your commander stops being an American and starts being an ally. Hier landet Patton mit seiner siebten Armee. Gangster Patton. Der Film wurde gleich nach der Landung auf Sizilien erbeutet. How the fuck they get this footage? Er ist ein außerordentlich fähiger und bescheidener Mann. Höchst ungewöhnlich für einen General. Oh. So. <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry guys. It's true, Montgomery's met the toughest resistance of the campaign there at Catania. Old Monty is as stuck as a bug on flypaper. Uh-oh, someone needs help? If you followed my plan, I'd be there by now. I'd cut off the retreat of every goddamn German and on this island. And I'm still gonna beat that limey son of a bitch, monsieur. <laughs> Damn. Now, you wouldn't be taking advantage of this situation, would you, George? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> General Alexander's heard we're moving west. Repeat, stop immediately. I think it was garbled in transmission. No way. We transmit the message and take your time about it. That'll take half a day at least. Oh. Like, sorry, didn't really hear you going through a tunnel it's... right now. <laughs> Where were we? We were talking about a simple old soldier. Patton is so interesting because it's like so many things are like by the book, do this. And then he bends the rules a lot of times as well. Yeah. But he did kind of get screwed over to begin with. Jeez. Yeah, is this Bradley going through the hills? He got shafted the most. Oh, yeah. man. But what are they going to do? They're just trapped in the mountains with no vehicles now? Those little bitches in charge of this operation. I don't know, but they ought to hang him. <laughs> You're talking to him. You get that compared to Patton going up that nice road. Patton's taking Palermo. Damn. Damn. What a welcome. Palermo's the most conquered city in history. Roman, Carthaginians, Byzantines. Palermo just gets wrecked <laughs> every hundred years or something. This is from General Alexander, sir. Reminding you that you are not to take Palermo. Oh, oops. Ask him if he wants me to give it back. <laughs> They're curious about your pearl handle revolvers. 
They're ivory. Only a pimp from a cheap New Orleans whorehouse would carry a pearl-handled pistol. <laughs> okay, jeez. What's your feeling about Montgomery? He's the best general the English have. He's not aggressive enough. Is that correct? Look, boys, I've been getting into a lot of trouble lately. <laughs> off the record, I'm gonna beat that gentleman to Messina. That's off the record? Rescue stalled British allies. Lucian, how's my fighter? Fine, George. Uh, come in, come in. I guess Bradley made it through the mountains. I was worried about him. Now, those men might get caught up there on the beach and cut to pieces. Give them an extra day. The landing is on. We're going to Messina. Yeah, Patton doesn't wait. Gambling with the lives of those boys just so you can beat Montgomery into Messina. Yeah. And if you pull it off, you're a big hero. But if you don't, what happens to them? I do this job because I've been trained to do it. You do it because you love it. Some harsh words. But it's interesting to think, like, obviously Patton is very aggressive and he always wants to keep moving. It's like, is he trying to beat Montgomery? Or is it also, like, you don't want to let the Germans have extra time to, yeah. like, build up their defense? But I feel like you should have said that then because it looks very much just like an ego thing. Right. You get that outfit cranked up, you're going to be out of a job. Well, he got him moving. What's holding up this column? I don't know, sir. Please. Oof. Sitting ducks. Now you're really going to get stuck. Is that a whole column get stalled and straight on account of a couple of jackasses? What the hell's the matter with you? Damn. Now dump them over the side and clear this bridge. <sighs> That's cruel, but your guys are also just stuck there getting shot at by planes. The reason we're pinned down, General, is we can't get any air support. If you can't put some fire into this battalion, Colonel, I'll get somebody who can. You got four hours to break through that beachhead down there. If you don't make it by then, I'll fire you. Damn. I'll fire you, I'll fire you. Colonel, there are 50,000 men on this island who'd like to shoot that son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Take me home. So many wounded just going past them. There he goes, old blood and guts. Yeah, our blood. His guts. He's not uh, developing a very good reputation with his men. No. Purple Heart. I think uh, Bradley's words are sinking in a little bit. I have no idea if he accomplished what he wanted to. What's the matter with you? Just can't take it, sir. Oh, he would want you out of here. Well, hell, you're just a goddamn coward. Shut up! Shut up! Damn. Bastard, get him out of here! You goddamn coward! Man, zero tolerance on that. I mean, from the beginning, we knew. Yeah. That just took such a turn after that moment. I think of like I think it was in Banner Brothers, maybe, but it's like fear is like crazy infectious. Mm -hmm. So on one hand, it's like that's very cruel what he just did, but I can also see the opposite where it's like, get you got to get the fear away from everyone else. It's time to consider just how many casualties we'd have if we were still down there crawling along that goddamn road. He's had enough of his comments. So Montgomery got there first anyways? Or maybe not. Well, he's waiting for you. Damn. Got everyone all lined up and ready. Don't smirk, Patton. I can't kiss you. I was actually very close this morning in preparation for getting smacked by you. It's like they're fighting each other more than they're fighting the Nazis. Oh, let's play our music louder. The man was yellow. He should have been tried for cowardice and shot. I ruffled his pride a little bit. What's that compared to war? Wow, so he's getting reprimanded for that? And now they draw cartoons about you. They got me holding a little GI there and kicking him with an iron boot. No way. What's on my boot? A swastika. On my boot, an iron boot with a swastika. Whoa, that's a little far. You will apologize to the soldier you slapped, and last but not least to the Seventh Army as a whole. Through individual units, one at a time. What? I was not anticipating that. God, I... Man, he took this place, got here first, and instead of like a, hey, congrats, it was a, hey, you got to apologize to literally every single person. I mean, had he not done that, though, he would have gotten that praise. He probably would have gotten the glory, yeah. Interested to hear his apology. 
Is that him? I think so. My sole purpose was to try to restore in him some appreciation of his obligations as a man and as a soldier. Now I freely admit that my method was wrong. Whoa. But I hope you can understand my motive and will accept this explanation and this apology. That was about what I would... I feel like he's going to try to skirt around actually apologizing. Yeah. But it would also... I feel like I would lose respect if he just came out there and was just like, I'm sorry. I mean, that's exactly what I expected of him. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want you to know that we are proud our son is serving in your army. We are not clear exactly what you did and why, but we want you to know we are for you. I feel like it's crazy, though, how that made that all the way home. Yeah, right? Here's a radio message just came in. I've been relieved. What? I don't believe it. Happy New Year. What? That's an aggressive move as he just slaps someone. Since they're sure to give you another command, isn't it logical that they'd relieve you here first? No, generally... It's a possibility, I... This guy always puts a nice spin on things. The logic of it is so obvious, it couldn't mean anything else. <laughs> I feel like they would transfer him, not relieve him, right? But if you find a bottle of cognac and open it, I'll help you drink. <laughs> The only reason you were fired is because they must be giving you a promotion. You're right. <laughs> but I actually kind of, I see that logic. Who wants to marry a couple of broken down old horse cattle? That's what my wife says to me every time I come home, sir. <laughs> what are you doing up so late, George? Just thought you might like a nice hot bath or a glass of milk or something. Ooh, milk. Of course you'd be a milk drinker. What about General Bradley, sir? How they gave him the top American command for the invasion. <gasps> oh, no. Well, I just thought you might be feeling kind of low, sir. Well, I'm sure he will now. I mean, it's probably better that he heard it from George. Yeah. One little dog face. One measly little slap. That's what done. Is this just for drama sake, or did this really happen? I would assume this is accurate. I'm just shocked the way that all played out. Intermission. <laughs> Man, we haven't had an intermission since Lawrence of Arabia, I know, right? right? That was so funny when he just played his music loud. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm like shocked by how this went down. All went down. Yeah. Just slapped a guy and they were like, get the fuck out of here. Especially like knowing him and how like open he was about everything. Like, about how he felt about people that were... Uh, I forget yeah. what the word Shell the term was. Yeah. This is so loud. Oh, my God. I'm turning it down. <laughs> it was wrong for him to have done that in front of everyone. Like, that was so embarrassing for that kid when he was in such, like, a vulnerable moment. But I didn't think that the reaction would be like this. Yeah. For what he did. And then for it to make it back to the States and the comics and then... Because, I mean, there are multiple moments, like, in Band of Brothers where, like, guys just break. And there's a couple of, like, there was one who was, like, digging a hole with his, like, fingers. And his, like, nails had ripped off. Oh, yeah, off. yeah, yeah. But they would just get them out of there. Like. That's what I was thinking. Like, you were, how you talked about, like, fear spreading. I was just thinking about why would you want to put him back into it and for it to spread. Right. Put him on in the, the front, front lines. lines. And yeah. if he's on the front lines, like, crying. That would be worse. Yeah. So I feel like I understand his desire to not want like cowards there, but you just got to send them somewhere else, not to the front lines or to scream at them in front of people. Je vous entends ma parole. France will be free again. I give you my word. I appreciate these translations. But the War Department killed that because of the slapping incident. No comment. Damn. General Eisenhower has ordered me to Malta, but that's off the record. Plan on slapping any soldiers there, General? Oh, he might slap the fuck out of you. He really decided to double down and send that letter to his mom? <laughs> I should have shot your son. <laughs> Still no word from General Eisenhower? No, sir. Not even any response about those uh, two turkeys I sent him for Christmas? It's like bringing flowers to your <laughs> partner if you make them mad. ...um unsere Einheiten dort zu verstärken, falls Petten von Ägypten aus loslegt. Do they have no idea that he's just kind of on the outs? I don't know. I feel like they've known so much. I mean, it was in like the newspapers in America, so they must. Court-martialed? 
Oh, they think it's propaganda? It kind of seems like it, unless we're getting played. No, I think that is what's happening. But it's interesting how, like, the media and the, like, public's opinion is I, so powerful. Right. The mirrors on the ceiling. Gonna have some fun. Who picked this cat? <laughs> General Smith, sir. You did it to spite me, son of a bitch. <laughs> now, we have an important assignment for you in connection with the Normandy invasion. Oh. We're going to let it leak out that you are here undercover. We're going to build an army of 12 divisions around you. All fictitious, of course. No way. Frankly, George, you're on probation. He's just a decoy? Your worst enemy is your own big mouth. I mean, they are following his moves very closely. Yeah. But this has got to be the worst for Patton. I definitely did not put that much thought behind that slap for how the rest of this movie goes. Look at this nasty face, son of a bitch, cop. <laughs> Uh-oh. Scared of the little dog? Did Abigail frighten your dog? It's quite all right. He's going to kill that dog. And I have assured him most earnestly that nothing he says will be quoted. <laughs> oh. It's almost like he's a joke now. Remember, sir, watch your language. Mm, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Have to date killed or captured some 170,000 of our enemy. Hey. The better we know each other, the better we will do it. Don't forget the Russians. Oh. <laughs> as soon as our soldiers meet and get to know the English ladies, then the sooner the American ladies will get jealous and force this war to a quick termination. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they liked it. <laughs> he watched his language. Oh my God, are you serious? <sighs> this man has insulted our Russian allies. In my opinion, you should be severely disciplined. They promised me there wouldn't be any reporters there. That was a pretty good speech. Stay here as a decoy or he sends you home. Those are the two choices? He's a good man. At least he's a fair man. This just keeps getting worse. I'm destined to achieve some great thing. What I don't know. I am going to be allowed to fulfill my destiny. I mean, it's crazy. He's like one of your best military minds. And you just have him off on the side being a decoy because he says a bad speech and slaps some soldiers. <coughs> Bless you. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I think the decoy move will I think work. that's, a, yeah, it's pretty effective. Well, yeah. it, it could be. Yeah, but I think for him, this is not. It's not it. No. And he kept that dog? No way. <laughs> what a way to enter the continent of Europe, huh? Along with all the rest of the spare parts. Yeah. General Bradley wouldn't send for you unless he had something in mind. He's such a <laughs> a good guy who spins everything. If I ever do get another chance, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. I'm going to play the game. If I forget, you remind me. <laughs> I'll give you a gentle nudge in the ribs. Give me a swift kick in the ass. <laughs> Interesting that Bradley sent for him. So I feel like as much as everything's going on, Bradley still respected... Is like mine, you know? Yeah. Welcome to France, sir. I hope the war's still on, Hanson. Where's the boss? Right this way, sir. Yeah, because Bradley never, like, left Patton, necessarily. It's not like he ever was like, I can't, you know, serve under you or whatever. I mean, he definitely disagreed he with disagreed. a lot, but I think yeah. he still had, like, a general respect for him. Respect enough to, like, be honest with him in person. Patton! Montgomery. I hear you're doing a splendid job decoying the Jevis. Well, you'll forgive me. I'm off to the front. Wow. Intelligence confirms that I'm against Rommel again. Montgomery versus Rommel? I tell you the truth. If I'd been your senior in Sicily, I would have relieved you. I'll crawl on my belly to get a command. For God's sake, you've got to get me in this fight. This is so interesting. Yeah. My God, Hitler's own people tried to kill him a couple of days ago. First thing you know, it'll all be over and... There's a long way to go. Keep my mouth shut. I'll behave myself. I won't slap anyone. 
I give you my word. I mean, he's desperate to get back in. I feel like Bradley already made a decision, though, because he wouldn't call for him unless he wanted him. Maybe he just enjoyed watching him growl <laughs> a little. What do you think? Screwball old horse cavalryman to command Third Army. Ike came to that conclusion in London three months ago. Why, that dirty. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> keep your mouth shut. I promise to keep my mouth shut. All right, back in the fight. They never listen to this guy, and he's <laughs> spot on. Sie bringen es offenbar fertig, diesen Unsinn unwidersprochen hinzunehmen, Jodel. Weil ich nicht darauf aus bin, dem Führer zu widersprechen. Um, maybe you should have pushed back a little. His Patton's not there. He push backs and he ends up like uh, Patton. <laughs> It's on the sideline. I like that the dog's still along for the ride. He didn't give up on him, even though he was a coward. At least have the courtesy to let us know where he's going. It's like you don't know George at all. Where you going, General? I'm going to personally shoot that paper hanging son of a bitch. Much different reception. <laughs> Oof. Wow. Pan's doing some damage. Hang. Pretty much gave Pan an army and said, go crazy. It's like the mules on the road all over again. That's it. That's the way to go. Good boy. All right, come on. There we go. Come on. That's it. Directing traffic. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh. Oof. <laughs> yeah, barely got around it. George, you'd make a good traffic cop. <laughs> a little retirement option. I think I smell Montgomery. Oh, no. Take it easy, George. There are serious issues involved here. Political issues. Again with the politics. Well, I know I'm a prima donna. I admit it. <laughs> They are kind of one in the same. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bailey's run out of gas. The point tank has run out too. Damn. You're just out of gas? Jeez. You're just like, oh, we're out of gas. Fuck it. We'll fight here. That looked bloody on both sides by a lot. And I'm sure it didn't help that they ran out of gas. Yeah. Oof. We started at 11 o'clock last night, finished a couple hours ago. Fighting was hand to hand. Jeez. Dang. Kissed him instead of slapped him. I mean, that guy didn't deserve a slap, but. I'd be afraid that there's still someone not quite dead. You know how I'm sure they're finished out there? They're using carts to move their wounded and their supplies. Oh. Montgomery. Patton's just going straight to Germany. Meanwhile, the main body of Patton's army, resupplied now and rolling like a juggernaut. All right, so he got restocked. Sir General Bradley, on your line. Good, good. Seems interesting that they're covering where he's going. Like. Yeah, it's not like a secret. Yeah. There's a lot of enemy activity up around our dens. Just to meet with Beetle Smith tomorrow at Verdun. Yes, sir. The snow. The German army hasn't mounted a winter attack since Frederick the Great. Therefore, I believe that's exactly what they're going to do. Okay. I mean, it does look like they're on the move. Changing directions 90 degrees, moving up to Luxembourg. Even the dog, what? From Arlon to uh, Bastogne. Oh, Bastogne. Our immediate concern is that von Rundstedt has the 101st Airborne trapped here. As Band of Brothers. Bastogne, by the way, is the key to this entire area. Ike wants to know if anybody can get up there and relieve the 101st. Well, we know who does. It's over 100 miles to Bastogne. My staff's already working out the detail. Yeah, he already started. I should have thought you would want to fall back and regroup. Not me, Freddie. I don't like to pay for the same real estate twice. <laughs> I was like, when has he ever fallen back? He'd say you're asking the impossible of your men. Of course he would. Because he's never realized that that's what we're in business for. He just loves taking shots at Montgomery. Oof. Looks miserable. 
Sir General McAuliffe turned down a German surrender demand. He said nuts. Keep moving, Colonel. A man that eloquent has to be saved. <laughs> Damn. Oh. Tanks just smash everything. Kraut killer. Go into a major attack with no rest, no sleep, no hot food. God, I'm proud of these men. <laughs> I feel like he loves the adversity because it also makes his, like, legend grow. Yeah. Starting to keep moving. Is that clear? If we're not victorious, let no one come back alive. It's all or nothing. This seems so different, though. Like, the motive. It's not about the glory. Like, he's like, there's men up there. Right. They can't tell when you're acting when you're not. It isn't important for them to know. It's only important for me to know. <laughs> I want a prayer. A weather prayer, sir? Yes, let's see if you can't get God working with us in this thing. No way. If you write a good prayer, we'll have good weather. I expect that prayer within an hour. Needs that good weather. We humbly beseech thee to restrain this immoderate weather. Grant us fair weather. Jeez. No stopping. Graciously hearken to All us. gas. Oh. Ooh, clear skies. Well, it's perfect. <laughs> he stands in good with the Lord, and I want to decorate him. <laughs> I'm glad that the air teams were still prepared. To help. Yeah, when it was looking like they couldn't. Right. Let George what? I don't know what it said. Went too fast. Let George do it, maybe? Yeah. Kilroy. Engaged more divisions in less time than any other army in the history of the United States. Damn. Oh, Hitler's already taken himself out. Wow. He was like Patton's number one fan. Yeah. Oh, that seems super entertained. <laughs> I mean, this has never been his, like, forte. He wanted war. Now war's over. He's yeah. not happy. That's good. great. Yeah, good job, Russians. <laughs> Please inform him that I do not care to drink with him or any other Russian son of a bitch. <laughs> Tell him word for word. Oh, this poor translator. <laughs> The general says he thinks that you are a son of a bitch, too. I'll drink to that. One son of a bitch to another. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's like, the war's over. I'm going to fucking say whatever I want now. <laughs> Slap whoever I want. Well, in the end, he stayed true to who he was. We've been told about these wonder weapons the Germans were working on. Weapons that don't need soldiers. No heroes, no cowards, no troops. No stories. Only those who are left alive and those who are left dead. I'm glad I won't live to see it. Interesting viewpoint of war. Did you say if you found your army between the Germans and the Russians, you'd attack in both directions? Damn. How could you possibly compare the Republicans and Democrats to the Nazi party? When did he do that? In 10 days, I'll have us at war with those sons of bitches, and I'll make it look like their fault. Damn, he just wants to keep on fighting. That one guy was right. Like, the end of the war is the death of Patton. Yeah. Goodbye. God bless you. What a shot. Right? It's just such like a lonely ending. Right now, I think I'm going to take Willie for a walk. Oh! oh. Jeez! Damn, almost killed by a fucking cart? I'm afraid we're going to have to be diplomats, administrators, you name it. God help us. <laughs> Seems like you mostly need to be politicians. Come on, Willie. <laughs> Wants to go after that horse, but you're afraid of little poodles. Roman conquerors returning from the wars enjoyed the honor of a triumph. All glory is fleeting. All right, that was Patton. What'd you think? I really enjoyed that. Yeah, that was quite an experience. I wasn't anticipating so much of like the behind the scenes aspect. I think I was expecting a lot more combat. Right. But I liked that. I liked that we got to see kind of what goes on behind the scenes and it really came down to a lot of politics 
and a lot of like journalism in the kind of media aspect of it. Right. Because we got to see Patton and because he was so highly regarded and he had this reputation about him and that single slap that just kind of changed the course of his entire career. Yeah, that was a pivot in the movie I was not expecting. Mm -hmm. That completely changed everything. Mm -hmm. And the back half of this movie kind of felt like a redemption arc for Patton. Yeah. It's not like he was a failure in combat, but it was just a failure in perspective or politics, however you wanna phrase it. I don't know the history of it. Like my knowledge of Patton was that like little end credit in like episode seven of Band of Brothers or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. That's all I knew. So to see this play out where it's like, he was looked at as kind of like a villain, even when he was like in Sicily and stuff, you know, one of the soldiers was like, there's 50,000 people on this island that would like to shoot that guy or mm -hmm. something like that. I'm like, dang, like these are the guys. I mean, he never really cared about his men liking him. He just no. wanted them to be good soldiers. Yeah. But still it was like, you don't have the respect of your men, kind of. And then the public was just like bashing him. I mean, even when he like gave that speech to like the uh, old British ladies and stuff, like the only headline was like, Patton insults Russia. And I was like, damn, this guy can't do anything without like scrutiny. Yeah, it was very interesting. I think that slap was what kind of snowballed into really the scrutiny yeah. on Patton. And so many things like over and over again that he would do, it was just wasn't good. Right. And it was whether he, you know, said something or he left something out or just his actions were just looked at under a microscope. And the media was kind of running with that. I think we've seen this. I think it was most highlighted maybe when we were watching the Pacific, how much the public view on was it the Pacific? I feel like it was the Pacific. How much the public view kind of influenced the war. And I think it was really interesting to see like when that article came out and it came down to him having to apologize to everyone, which was about the apology that I would expect from yeah, him. Yeah, that was a patent apology. Yeah, and it just snowballed from there. And he really, he couldn't do anything right. No, he really couldn't. And then uh, one of the more fascinating scenes was when he uh, linked up again with Bradley uh -huh. and he was just like practically begging. Like he even said like, I'll crawl on my belly just yeah. for an opportunity to get back in the fight. And it's just so interesting to see this guy that's just like so in love with war. He also had another interesting scene where he was like on a battlefield and there's dead bodies everywhere. And he was just like, God, I love this. And it's like, all right, there's a couple of screws loose, but it's like, you kind of need that to a certain degree mm -hmm. to be a patent, like a legendary general. Mm -hmm. So to see him go from like this legendary figure to then also him being hated by the public and his own men to then be like groveling for a position. And then towards the end, kind of like that redemption, like to dominate his way through Europe mm -hmm. to, you know, link up with the 101st Airborne in Bastogne and like the change of tone of like when men would pass him or he would go by, like they're waving, they're like happy, they're happy to see him walking with them. Like mm -hmm. it, it did feel like a little bit of a redemption and then war was over and he became useless essentially. Like he's only good at war. Yeah, um, it was a roller coaster yeah. for sure. And it's crazy how over the course of the years, just what he was dealing with. I mean, he's pushing the limits for sure. And we saw Constantly. that. And the way I think I liked watching the relationship between Patton and Bradley. Yeah. Um, I think Bradley was the one to kind of pull him back into that right state of mind, because I think that's what made Patton and Montgomery so similar were their egos. Yeah. To a certain extent, I feel like ego is necessary to lead in this, but look at Bradley. I mean, and at one point you even have the Germans uh, talking about the fact that Bradley is pretty much the only one that doesn't have that ego. Yeah, they had that like meeting where somehow they got that footage. Yeah. That was another interesting perspective. Like I always like seeing multiple perspectives. Uh -huh. So to kind of see 
again, behind the scenes for the Germans and their like research mm -hmm. onto patent. And there was this one guy who was just constantly correct, like very in tune, thinking exactly like Patton would think, mm -hmm. didn't really get listened to that much, yeah. but it was just really interesting to see how like warfare goes beyond just shooting bullets and stuff. And in order to predict what they're gonna do next, like they said, who's this man? Like, who is the man? I don't wanna know like where he grew up and yeah. all of this. It's like, who is this man? And it was the same with Patton reading- Rommel's? Yeah, Rommel's book. Yeah. Uh, which, should you? Yeah, you're right. Like, I feel like there should be a rule. Like, if you're gonna be leading an army- Like, still, if you're still in it. If you're still in the army, you can't write anything. Yeah. I mean, maybe there is a rule now, but I mean, it, literally giving someone like the map to get into your head and be able to predict what it is, like what type of strategy you like to use. Yeah. But then again, it's just like the level of information and detail was astonishing yeah. because they had a story about Patton in like New York trying to save a girl and they related that to some history lesson. Yeah of like wanting to be like this warrior, the shining warrior yeah. who comes in as a savior and they use that to predict his next move. Yeah. I don't know if they listen to him, but it's just like the level of information and detail into who you are as a person was so important in battle strategy. Yeah. And I mean, even Patton's like legend, they used him as a decoy. Yes. And, and that was believable. I think that was, such a smart move. Obviously, Patton wanted nothing to do with it because he felt like he was just getting pulled and he wanted to be on the front lines. But that was extremely smart for them to use him because really for the Germans, it was like, why would they bench Patton, like, yeah. Patton in general? Right. Yeah. So I'm uh, just a fascinating movie that I think I was with you too. I was expecting more of like the uh, battles that Patton went through or something. Uh -huh. But the majority of this movie really is like this political back and forth, the overcoming obstacles that Patton needed to overcome <laughs> that was outside of like warfare yeah. and stuff. And it was just like some aspects that you just don't think about at all. Yeah, there was battles, but I mean, for like almost a three hour movie, that was not the main point, I no, feel like. it was secondary for sure. Like any combat that we were seeing was secondary or it was like to back up something that was being said. Like when Patton came in and he's talking about air control or right. uh, air superiority. Yeah, <laughs> they didn't have any air reinforcements or yes. whatever, and then they get attacked. Literally, so I, it felt like it was only to back up conversations that were being had versus this being like a war film. Yeah, I would say this is more of like a deep dive. Strategy. Yeah, well, like it was like a deep dive on who Patton was yeah. as a person. Yeah. So totally unexpected from what I thought going into this. Yeah. Incredibly fascinating. I feel like the movie took a big shift mm -hmm. with that slapping incident. Mm -hmm. And from that point forward, it felt like a completely different vibe of everything. Yeah. Which I feel like, I mean, we've only seen, I think, Lawrence of Arabia, and I don't remember if DOS Boat had an intermission, but I feel like the intermission does like lead to a shift. There was a big shift in Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah. Like he was so great, and then he became so like power hungry, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. I don't know, but definitely things went downhill for Lawrence. Yeah, and, and I feel like it's the intermission. Yeah, it's the intermission. It's like, <laughs> yeah. okay, we're going to fuck shit up now. Yeah, so very interesting in this one as well, because it was like, it gave you that slapping moment, and then it was like, okay, now is all the consequences of this and everything that's going to snowball from that moment. Yeah, so a, a very unique story, and obviously George C. Scott, fantastic as Patton. Yeah. Like he was such a presence on screen. Yeah. Some of the cinematography was excellent. Yeah. I said this when we watched Seven Samurai, that it's like sometimes you watch a movie and you kind of want a remake, not because you think it could be better, but because you just want to see things with just more, I guess, advanced technology that we have now. Mm -hmm. Like I really enjoyed the warfare, 
but you can tell that it still is like relatively basic. Mm -hmm. Like it's just a, you know, bomb going off and then people kind of falling over. There were some where like tanks and buildings and stuff were like really being blown up. Yeah. And that was like, holy shit, that was incredible. But it would just be cool to see a rehash of this. I wish everything could be the exact same, but the warfare was like <laughs> a little bit more realistic, I guess. Yeah, but I guess that wasn't really the point of this film. No, it wasn't. And yeah. that's like, that's why I, it's not to say that it could be done better. Yeah. Just, I want to see, you wanna see it. <laughs> that included. Yeah. Um, the point I think of this movie, like we said, is the characters, mm -hmm. primarily uh, Patton. Yeah. But the side characters were incredible too. Like Bradley so good. was so yeah. good. I really enjoyed Bradley. Um, we had to look up, it was Codman. I feel like Codman was such like a light to a lot of dark moments for Patton. Absolutely. Like, uh, obviously when he first got let go and he was just like, whoa, it must mean you're getting assigned somewhere else. And Patton was like, you're right. Yeah. There was also a moment when he's like in the plane and he's just like with a bunch of junk spare parts. Mm -hmm. And he's like, this isn't junk. Like this is all incredibly important stuff, just like you. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Like he came in clutch so many times. Yeah, I mean, he was someone that Patton needed, even if he probably wouldn't ever admit that he kind of needed that like, little bit of hope. Yeah, a little pep talks and stuff. A little boost. Um, and then we also had George. George was great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, George was great. He was always kind of there for him in like on the back end. As much as Montgomery was Montgomery, I feel like it was it was kind of a good back and forth that we got to see with him and Patton. I believe their presence made each other better. Yeah. Because they always just tried to one up each other. Yeah. So it's kind of like their focus was on each other and they, the victim was the Germans yeah. in their conquest to see who could do better. <laughs> true, true. So yeah, just a very interesting movie that went in a completely different direction than I anticipated. Yeah but I feel like it covered like a legendary figure and I kind of feel like bummed out or like a little sad. He just kind of walks off with his dog. Even in his like closing statement, he talks about these like legendary returns of like Roman conquerors mm -hmm. and these giant like, you know, festivities that they have mm -hmm. for these, you know, victorious warriors. And he just kind of gets sent off. And I don't know, like I'm, I wish there was something in the end that said like, yeah, we're gonna have to look it up. Gonna, does he go to the Pacific? Yeah, or does he just go back to the States and like, that's it. He just dies. He died in an automobile accident in 1945? What the hell? Okay, so we just looked it up, like curious what happens to Patton after. Yeah. He just dies in a car accident. Yeah, I feel like maybe that uh, scene kind of at the end there was like a little bit of foreshadowing. Yeah, it had to have been. Yeah, bummer. Especially after he said like, oh, the only, it was something about like the only. The only good death for yeah. a soldier is like the last bullet in the last battle in the last war or yeah. something. And then for him to die in a car accident? Very soon after. Yeah. Like, almost immediately after the end of the war. Yeah. Also, I'm not, I don't understand what they were saying about the denazification. So please uh, inform me what that means. Obviously I know like the history of the United States, like we kind of took some Nazi scientists and we're like, hey, you want to not be Nazis anymore? Like we can just kind of look the other way. He was military governor of Bavaria, but he was relieved on this post because of his statements on denazification. I know you're reading. Yeah, we're going to look up a lot yeah. of stuff about that. But what a, you know, I was not expecting to look that's that up. That's way to go. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like that movie kind of ends on like this like bummer kind of note. Yeah. And I guess that's intentional because he literally just dies very soon in a car accident. Yeah, I mean, I'm gl I guess I'm glad they didn't show that in really the follow him like after the war to show that. Give us some clarity in the comments because yeah. I'm really curious, even though we might just look it up and get the answers <laughs> anyways. We read still. all the comments anyways. So. Yeah, so what a movie and uh, I'm glad that it won the poll. Yeah, no, this was great. I'm really glad that we were able to watch this. Um, so thank you to the patrons for voting for this uh, to win our war film poll. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on any other types of social media, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, peace everyone. Bye. Bye.